Hi there, this is a tutorial uh, based on the request I got from a Geek's Garage viewer and he's wanting me to model out a, a magazine for a machine gun or any kind of weapon and this is one that I found online and I'm just going to try and do my best to model it with uh, as, low, as little polygons as possible so depending on your budget that you've got then you'll you know you'll be able to get all the detail in there but I'm going to base put it on the basis that the normal map's going to get the bulk of the detail from it so first of all you want to make a cube uh, or a box depending on what software you're using here I'm using uh, Max 2012 um, I'll just roughly get a magazine shape so just drag out your box and set your height there I'm just going to add three height divisions. I'm going to move them about slightly. Okay, so once you've got that, um, add your edit poly modifier on top. Let's just adjust these to match. So I'll have one division here, I'll have one here. I'll have a few divisions here to do this shape and um, the rest could really be done with a normal map um, but for some areas where it sticks out a lot like up here I'll maybe do some extra geometry uh, again it depends um, this this writing part that can all be done with a normal map as well but magazines in general aren't going to be very big on screen so you get away with a normal map unless uh, you need a detail shot for a CGI scene or um, if it's a collectible and you've got it in your inventory and you can zoom in and look around it you might want to do a higher poly version for that okay so let me just line these up where we need them put another swift loop in here This is just going to be a quick and clanky video. I'm not I'm not going to get into too much detail. I'm not going to make this thing perfect. Uh, so just teach you guys the principles. Okay, I'm pressing Q here to go back to the select tool. It helps me jump out of things especially swift loop and target weld and anything else any other modifiers so I'm going to choose the polygons which is also classed as faces in some case and I'm just going to drag through here you notice here I've got a uh, window crossing and if you sw if you toggle this when you select something it, it has to be in this case it has to be inside the marquee to be selected uh, this is useful for kind of isolating what you want to select uh, or find it just by going around it but this method just means it has to be touching the marquee so for example I could select these two by crossing through them I, I tend to prefer that, that method but that depends on what I'm selecting so as long as I've got ignore back facing off here then I'll select right through and I tend to use the orthographic use for that to make sure that you know I'm selecting right through. If I try to select something from this, it's going to select down at an angle. Okay, so I'm just selecting these. I'm going to press uh, the scale key, which will be your R key, uh, and I'll just scale them up uh, uniform, and that pushes the bottom part out. so this part here uh, that would be an edge if I click on one edge I'll press Q again just to jump out of scale there but if I click on one edge and I hold down shift it will act as a you know a kind of loop and it will select all the way around uh, something like this I want to uh, I want to kind of make a, a kind of crease here so I could use a chamfer 
If I jump or two seg two segments, I'll get this, and I can kind of adjust the amount so that it adjusts the the edge either side of that main line there. Okay, so with that done, I'll select the original one. Hold down Shift. I should select all the way around, and then I'll press my scale key, your R key, or you can press the scale button up here. And I'll just scale it in a little bit. And that would just create a little you know, a little pinch there. You could easily do that with a normal map, but for this case, because it's bigger than most of uh, the other bits, you know, it's not really bigger. A normal map would do that fine, but just, just for instance, if it was uh, something you wanted to show more detail in, <coughs> or if this part opened up, it hinged open, then you maybe want that kind of chamfer to it. Uh, Right, so another thing we want to do is just chamfer off the sides. So I'll just choose this edge, press Q again, hold down Shift, hold down Control and select that side, Control and Shift, Control, Control and Shift. And the reason I'm using Control and Shift is to add to the selections. So Control, Control and Shift. So the Shift acts as the loop, and Control acts as the add to the current selection. There we go. So I've selected. Let me just go a bigger screen here. <coughs> selected all the edges. I'll just do a chamfer on that. I'm trying to keep below 100 polys here, so I might go over a little bit. Yeah, well, there, there you go, 98 polys, that, and that's more than enough. There we go, can go less there, 66. I just chamfer the edge enough to take away the harshness. Now, you can see from the reference, there's a little bit of geometry at the top here, you've got these two parts here that probably clip on to something or I'm not sure if the bullet's going this way or something but either way we'll try and copy that design. You've got these extra lips here and these extra extrusions here and that there. So let's go ahead and see where we can put those. Now at the top of the model here I've got some you know end gons, I've got a big end gone here and I want to kind of split that up into polys, same with the bottom. So I just use my cut tool. I'll cut that across there. And max when you've when you've reached an edge or a vert, the little icon will change. So you can see it's a little square target. If I move to the edge, it goes to uh, a kind of thicker horizontal line to show you on an edge, show you that you're on an edge, and if you go to a vert, it goes to a small little uh, target. So you kind of want to make sure, do want to make sure that you're making those little cursors change. <coughs> Pardon me. So it's the bottom done, and let's do the top. Now what we could do. Seeing as we've got these two ridges to make, we'll cut the top the other way. So choose cut. Let's go that way. Same for the other side. Okay, and I've done cut off just now. Right, so. So here's our reference here. I'm gonna, gonna make a little cut here. I'm gonna be left with uh, an end gone in this side, so I'll just bring it down to a point. Uh, you know, one of these corners. So, but first of all, actually, seeing as I'm at only 70 polys, let's go ahead and add some more swift loops. I'll just put one here. And one here. 
okay, we're at 110 polys. So that's that's us. We've just stepped over budget a little bit. We're just over 100 polys. For a magazine, isn't too bad. Uh, in fact, we could go much more than that. The engines will handle, you know, what you need without uh, overdoing it. So anything less than 400 for a magazine is plenty. Okay, so I've made some cuts here and they'll do, they'll do nicely for this part. And plus they'll help for when it comes to modeling the rest of these parts. Okay, so do an extra cut across here. In fact, let's do this from a different view. Well let's look let's look at it top down. I'll just make sure I've got ignore back facing on here, just to be sure. Okay, that's done that fine. Sometimes I just like to check it, make sure it's done it right. For now, let's forget about the the, the poly count uh, and kind of making it seem like an issue because sometimes it can be. So just just be wary of it. Uh, for this tutorial, it's just going to be whatever we need to get the message across. So okay, so I've put a cut there, and you see I've cut it. It becomes a triangle here. Um, it's just it's better to have triangles than n-gons because triangles ain't too bad unless you're doing some animation. So I'm going to select these polygons here. And if I move these up, well, that's way too much, but if I extrude them up, it would be a better idea. a little bit just like the, the reference there. Oops. Let's change this to shaded. Uh, okay so if I choose these two edges and just move them back. Well, what we could do is is these What's this and this and um, no, we want to choose the other two we want to choose these two and these two if I use connect here I can create I can align a dash in between which is ideal and those will be selected so I'll just move those so they make more of a kind of curve. Something like that. Choose the two faces here. And move them back a bit. <coughs> you can see, so <coughs> at a distance it gives us that slight little curve. Which is ideal. Okay, so let's create the other two parts here. Oh, you'll notice I've got I've got this end gone here, so I better deal with that before I move on. So I'll just cut here to this corner. I'm just going to go full screen here. I'll take away the the graphic tool. <coughs> so again, I'll turn off cut, choose my edges. And if I do a connect in this, I'm going to get more lines this way. So I really want to choose these two and do connect 
you know, to do two segments this time. I'll cut these so they become triangles. Just these polygons here. Now let's just see. Okay. Okay, and those look closer to the edge to me. I could do with the taking that part up with me for a little bit of chamfer, so I'll select the two faces and extrude. Possibly to about there. Now if I just deselect these two by holding down the Alt key, I can move these parts up higher. And that gives me the chamfer that I need there. So let's have another look. There is a chamfer on this side as well. So I'll just choose this edge and this edge. This edge and this edge. And I'll chamfer those. Let's go that just extra bit of detail there, I've just added an extra chamfer. Now, that looks pretty good. Okay. And there's an extra bit to raise up here as well, so let's have another look to see. It's just in front, and I've no idea, I don't have a vertical view of this, a top down view of this, but I could put just a little bit there. So I'll just uh, choose these. First of all, let me click this. I'm just going to move it back because you can see it's kind of gone at an angle there. Choose this part and it looks good. Just like that. I'll choose these faces. In fact, let me just select it in an orthographic fashion. So I'll just select straight through like that. as long as back face, uh, ignore back face is switched off. So let me just switch that off. Then it should select the other side. Let's go ahead and deselect any faces we don't want to extrude. Okay, and it's a very, very slight extrusion there. Like I said before, I'd probably get away with using a normal map for it, but just to show you. Okay, and just to round that off, let's bring uh, these edges down a bit more. Just like that. Same here, let's bring these just up a bit. Okay, 
Okay, so that's pretty good to go for uh, putting our UV map on. So in the next part, I'll show you how to uh, do the UV map. Cheers.